Alright, what's going on everyone? Today we'll be going over the VPerm. So the VPerm algorithm is quite well known because it is one of the few PLL algorithms which actually has a rotation halfway through the alg. But I will be going through a rotationless algorithm as well so you guys can pick which ones you like better. So the first one I'll be showing right now is the one that I use as my main algorithm which is the one with the rotation. So it goes like this. So as I mentioned, there is a rotationless algorithm for the VPerm, and this is the rotationless algorithm that I used as my main for quite a while before I switched back to the original one. And so I actually quite like this alg as well, and it goes like this. So if you're interested in some tips to memorize these algorithms, I'll put the timestamps to both of them in the video right here. I'll also put some more timestamps in the video description as well, so feel free to check those out. So VPerms are actually quite straightforward to recognize, especially if you get them from this particular angle. And so the most obvious thing about the VPerm is this big 2x2 two two block here at the front. So we want to hold this 2x2 two two block so that one of the 2x1 two bars is facing us and the other 2x1 bar is facing the left side. So unfortunately, if you're facing the other two sides, it's not too obvious what PLO it is. But if you get it from this angle with the 2x2 two two block facing you, it's actually quite obvious what the PLO is. So for those of you who have learnt the A-perm before, you may recognize this as looking very similar to the A-perm and you'll be right because they are quite similar. So over here I have an A-perm as well and from this angle, this is the V-perm on the right and the A-perm on the left but it's not too obvious unless you know what you're looking for. So on the V-perm, as you can notice, there's no headlights but instead of looking at the back, an easy way to recognize that this is a V-perm from this angle is to look at these corner colors on the sides here. So these two colors are not matching, so that's how you know that this is a V-perm. So similarly with the A-perm, first of all we can pretty much look for the headlights, but of course we all know that looking at the back during PLL recognition is not efficient. So instead from this angle, we can notice that these colors are matching. So this will be an A-perm, not a V-perm. So going into some more advanced recognition techniques, this is actually a VPerm and you'll have to believe me for now. And over here I have a PLO which looks very similar, but I guarantee you the one on the left is definitely not a VPerm. So how should I recognize which one is a VPerm from this angle? Well the easiest way that I like to go about it is to look at the edge color and this corner color here. So if these are matching and these two are matching, then it's a VPerm. Otherwise, you can recognize it as a checkerboard pattern going from red, blue, red, blue. It'll be the same for any other color as well. So if you see this checkerboard pattern in the four colors on the middle, then it's actually a V-perm. So similarly, if we grab the other PLO that we were looking at before, we notice that there's no checkerboard pattern in the inside, whereas there's actually a checkerboard pattern on the outside, so green, red, green, red. So if we cover up the middle two stickers, it still forms sort of a checkerboard pattern on the outside. This is not a V-perm, this is actually a Y-perm. So by looking at these checkerboard patterns on the other side of the cube, we can deduce which PLO it is without actually looking for matching bars or matching colors. So this is going into advanced two-sided PLO recognition territory, but I thought I'd just briefly mention it in this video because it does help you recognize the VPerm from multiple angles. So even though the VPerm algorithm isn't too long, some of the moves can be a bit tricky to remember. 
So here I'll be going over the best ways that I used to help me remember the VPerm algorithm. So for the algorithm that I use, which is the one with the rotation, I always start the algorithm with a regrip. So, well, before, once again, the two by one bar should be held at the front left. So as I said, I always start the algorithm with a bit of a regrip. This just helps me remember the start of the algorithm. So it starts off with an R prime. So I do that with a regrip. That way my index finger is perfectly set up to do the next U move. Do another R prime and then follow that by another U prime with my left hand here. Now that's when we do a rotation. So the Y rotation pretty much means to go to the face on the left like this. We continue the algorithm with the R prime F prime followed by an R2. So I usually like to track the white pieces when I do these few moves. U prime R prime U can be remembered by just remembering the moves since they're quite easy to remember. And then finally, the last four moves, I also like to remember to track the white pieces as well. We do an extra R prime F to connect this three by one bar of white together. And then finally, we finish off with an R followed by another F, which actually solves the V perm. So going over that again, just to make sure you've gotten everything, so the VPerm algorithm starts off with the R prime U, which I remember by regripping at the start, then followed by another R prime and another U prime. So in this case, we can do the U prime and Y separately, but a nice way to remember it is to do the U prime and the Y at the same time. So that actually speeds up the algorithm just a bit and it helps you remember which direction to rotate and which direction to do the U move in. I like to track the white pieces from this stage. So moving this two by one bar at the front here and then moving this white piece all the way up to the back with the next few moves. Finally, there's a U prime, R prime, U. And then finishing off the V perm by once again matching up the white colors with the R prime F, which matches up this three by one bar. And by this stage, the cube already almost looks solved you just match up the rest of the colors and that finishes off the algorithm. So now going over the rotationless algorithm that I also quite like. The first four moves of this algorithm is actually the same as the first four moves of the other rotation algorithm. Um, it also starts with an R prime U, R prime U prime. So these first four moves are all the same. So now this is where the moves start to differ. So in this case, we have an R D prime. So we can remember the R going like this and the D prime pretty much means that you use your right ring finger and you flick over like this. R prime D of course D would mean your left ring finger flicking back over like this. Next up we have an R prime followed by the U and D prime so the R prime can be done with a bit of a regrip this also helps you remember that the U and D prime means that you're moving the top and bottom layers in the same direction. Finally, the last five moves are usually quite easy to remember by remembering how your hands move. So the R2 U prime can be done like so. And we can remember that the R2 D, which means that the D layer is moving over towards the right side once again, or you can remember it as using your left ring finger again, and then finishing off with an R2, which finishes off that algorithm. So going over that once again, just to make sure you got everything. So the first four moves, we've already seen this before, same as the rotation algorithm. So it's all the same up to this stage, which we do the R D prime, R prime D. So alternate our ring fingers with our right and left hands. A bit of a regrip here to help us remember which way we're going with the U and D moves. We're flicking both layers towards the left side. Next up, we do a, another regrip, which is the R2 U prime, R2 D. So both the U and D layers are going back over to the right side this time, and then finishing off with an R2, which should solve the cube. So there are a few finger tricks and few regrips that you might need to know for both of these algorithms. So for the first algorithm, which is the one with the rotation, the only regrip required for that algorithm is actually at the start and then again when you rotate the cube. 
So here I'll show you. So usually at the start with the first four moves, it's easily remembered if you do a bit of a regrip as well with the first four moves. Next up, we do a bit of a regrip with the rotation. And then the rest of the moves should be regripless if you do the F moves properly. So you notice the first F move, I usually use my left index finger coming down like this. And then the second F move, I use my index finger on my right hand to come back down like this. And then finally here we can use our right index finger again, or otherwise you can use your left thumb to push up the F layer like this. Both of those will work fine. Either of those won't require a regrip. So even though the second algorithm that I showed is rotationless, there's actually quite a few key regrips that you have to do during the algorithm to make sure it flows smoothly. So once again, similar to the other algorithm, the first regrip you do is at the start of the algorithm just to help remember the first four moves and it flows nicer like this anyway. Next four moves with the R and D moves can be done without regrips as well. So now before I do the final D move here, I like to regrip as I do the D move. So that way I'm trying to waste as less time as possible doing the regrip to follow up with the R followed by the U and D prime. So the U and D prime is done together with your index and ring finger like this. It's quite a fancy finger trick, but it looks quite cool as well. Right after you do the U and D prime with your right hand, you still have to regrip your right hand. It's not gonna flow as nicely as if you're doing a, a move with your left hand, but still it is necessary to, to regrip with the R2 like this. And then the rest of the algorithm should be done without a regrip like that. So just a quick comparison, just to sum up both algorithms. So the first algorithm only has one regrip at the start, but then requires a rotation, which is another two regrips. But the rotation can be done along with the U prime. So instead of doing a U prime and then rotating, you could do the U prime and rotate at the same time. So it's kind of like a wide D prime move. You can think of it that way as well. So it actually makes the finger tricks a lot nicer if you think of it that way. But the second algorithm does not have a rotation, which some people might prefer, but it does have up to three regrips. But the last four moves, when you're doing the R2, U, R2, D, that will be a real potential for a lot of lockups. Unless you have a really good speed cube, it might actually be easier if you use the algorithm with the rotation, because the last five moves of the second algorithm can cause quite a lot of lockups if you don't have a cube with very good corner cutting. So there's another alternative algorithm for the VPerm, which I'll show right here. It's also another RUD algorithm and it's also rotationless as well. I personally have never used this algorithm, but it is quite widely used by a lot of other people and it is a popular choice as well. So if you're not a big fan of the algorithms that I showed previously, I'll put this one in the video description as well. So feel free to check this one out as well. And maybe you might like this one better. So yeah, it's really up to you which algorithm you want to use. My suggestion would be if you don't like one of the algorithms, try a different one and just give it a go and see which ones work better for your particular turning style. So unlike the VPerm algorithm, the VPerm AUF is actually really easy to remember. And that's because it's very obvious. It's the two by two block here. So none of these colors will move after the algorithm. It doesn't matter which algorithm you use, there won't be an AUF as long as these colors are aligned. So as always going through an example with an AUF, so you notice that this two by two block is misaligned by a U prime move. So that means after doing the V perm algorithm, we'll have to add a U prime at the end of the algorithm to actually solve the cube. So I did this example specifically is because it's actually quite difficult to do the U prime after the algorithm, which I'll show right now. So if we do the algorithm like this, you'll notice that our left hand is actually not in a good position to do a U prime. We might have to regrip to do the U prime. So instead, there's a few ways. The first way is to just drag the U layer over like this with your left hand. Another way is to just use your right index finger and push the U layer over like this. So both of those work perfectly fine. So that eliminates the regrip at the end. So you can transition more smoothly into AUF before you finish solving the cube. So that's it for this VPerm tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer all of them. 
Like the video if you guys learnt something new. Please subscribe if you want to see more similar videos and share these videos with people you know who are currently learning PLO or who want to learn full PLO. It definitely helps grow the channel. I appreciate everyone's support. Once again, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.